Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly, warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God. I do hope everybody had a uh, had a good Thanksgiving. I know uh, I had a crowded one. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I had, uh, you know, most of the kids down, two of my daughters, one works at uh, Sears and one for Denny's. They had to uh, go into work that evening, so they weren't able to come down. But other than that, we had uh, we had a full house. We had uh, all the rest of the kids, the in-laws, outlaws, and all the grandkids. And we were up at uh, my parents' house until we wore them out. And then we uh, spent some time down here. And as you might figure, I had a whole load of grandchildren over the weekend for four days. Uh, so it made things kind of interesting and, uh, and lively and a lot of fun and a little bit expensive <laughs> over the holiday. But... Uh, I expect that this time of year, so uh, it wasn't any kind of surprise. So I hope you had a uh, a good holiday. We did have a little bit of mishap. Uh, I had planned to uh, have a couple of uh, other messages up for you and probably would have had. I had spent a couple days working on them, and last night I had one uh, pretty much written out, and the other one was totally complete. All I was doing, I was sitting there picking out my music that I was going to add to it, and... Uh, well, as things would have it, it appears the Lord didn't want those out at that particular time because my grandson, one of them was chasing one of the kittens and they went flying through under my desk and his foot landed right on the uh, on-off switch for my power cord and uh, shut down everything. Wham! There it went off and uh, I lost it all, all the work I had done on those things. I did manage to get back the basic outlines. Uh, because I had pulled them off and done, and written, done some writing on them and, and I had saved the outlines, but I hadn't saved any of the other stuff yet because uh, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to lose it. But uh, so it appears the Lord didn't want those messages to go out, at least at this time. So, uh, and praise God, he gave me something else to talk to you about. And that's why I'm here this morning, my friends. From the book of Exodus. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and thou shalt hollow it, hallow it, there we go, and all the furniture thereof, and it shall be holy. You know, the tabernacle as a whole is, is seen and meant to be seen as a type and a signpost directing us, directing us, direct, directing us to Christ. Its white-robed priest is a shadow of the Holy One of God, the only true high priest before God for all men. Its bleeding lamb, unblemished before men and God, slain upon the altar, is the spiritual image of the Lamb of God by whose blood we have all been redeemed. Its innermost sanctuary, the Holy of Holies of the Tabernacle, is a type, my friends, of the heavenly sanctuary into which our risen Lord has entered to make atonement for sins. And its outer court, its outer court is the analog of the present world which we find ourselves in now. A world in which we are here to serve him with the incense of our devotions, the light of our testimony, and the very fruit of our lives. So you see, incarnation, meditation, restoration, and the anointing oil of consecration. These are the things of which the tabernacle with its furniture, its services, its utensils, and its priests were all the special types. They were a signpost and a message board directing us to the living one of the living God. In the book of John, 1st John, I should say, we read this passage the anointing which you receive from him remains in you 
and you don't need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is no lie, and even as it taught you, you will remain in him. My friends, when this anointing oil of holy blood and spirit appointed to all ends falls upon your heart, one drop, a soothing, solitary drop will sanctify for you forever to the service of God. You know, there was only a small amount of the holy anointing oil used for the service of the tabernacle, especially when we consider the size and the quantity of what had to be consecrated. And we can see the picture presented to us here as the high priest goes through and performs the sacred work. He touches each vessel one after another with a drop of oil. For one drop, one drop sanctified the vessel to the service of the tabernacle. There was no further repetition of God's con consecration needed for any of these utensils after this. For the sanctification of Almighty God abides, my friends. It truly abides. So you see, with a drop of the consecrating oil of God's love shed within our hearts, with just a touch of the anointing to teach us his truth as it is in our risen, as it is in our risen Savior. And with only a breath, a mere breath, to penetrate, to soften, to heal, to feed, to give light, life, and power to our souls. We, the lambs of God, receive blessing and unction from the Holy One according to the call He has placed on our lives. We know, we know within our hearts, almost instinctively, all things which are for our salvation. And my friends, most importantly, by that same holy oil, we have been sanctified, sanctified unto God and before God and made fit as a priest after the order of Melchizedek for an eternal consecration. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, my friends. Until the next time. Goodbye.